Hi, my name is Robert Feranek. I'm from Fedevel Academy. And in this video, we are going to speak about fake chips. <gasps> fake chips! And we have an example here. So I can show you that they really exist. And uh, we will compare it. We will compare the real chip and the fake one. You will see that there, there is difference. So what does it mean fake chip? Uh, sometimes happen that uh, you buy a chip and uh, something doesn't work. And then you find out that one of the chips which you fit on the board, uh, it, it doesn't behave as it should. So, so sometimes happen that there are these companies what uh, will sell you a chip with the marking what you need, you know. But inside of the chip, there may be, for example, nothing. <laughs> so there is no silicon inside of the chip. Or sometimes uh, what companies, some bad companies, what they do, uh, they take, for example, some old chips, they scrap the original part number, and then they just put there some new part number and they will sell the chip to you as the, you know, the part, part with the new part number. Uh, what happened in this situation? So how did I, uh, uh, how, how I got this uh, fake chip? Uh, I'm not sure if you know, uh, but uh, we have this open source project called IMX6 Rex open source project. There are a couple of different boards and uh, by the way, if you like, uh, you can you can check this website uh, because uh, mm, there are quite uh, some interesting projects, and you can uh, download uh, the files, uh, even the complete Altium project of these files, uh, some of these boards which are here or most of them, and you can have a look uh, on the layout or on the schematic. So basically, what was happening? Um, a company was building uh, these uh, IMX 6 Rex modules and uh, basically they just received them from production and these modules, they didn't work. Wow. Yeah. And they spent like uh, two days trying to figure out why the, why the modules uh, don't work and they couldn't find uh, the reason. So they called me. I went to the company and uh, I asked uh, what they were actually doing, what, what they found out. So this is the module. And uh, what was happening, uh, when they plug in the module and when they switch on the power supply, then very high current uh, was uh, driven from the power supply and uh, sometimes the processor get hot, sometimes the memories get hot, but once the module was plugged in and once the power was connected to the module, then the module was completely damaged. And first thing what I wanted to see was what would you do as, a, as the first thing. I wanted to measure the voltages. Okay? So I asked the guy to measure voltages on these power supplies. You can see here are power supplies here and here, four different power supplies. And I asked him to measure the voltages on the outputs of these power supplies, so uh, on these capacitors, which are here. And we found out that all the voltages, which are here, they are exactly the same. All these voltages on the outputs of these power supplies, they were exactly the same as the input power supply. When you measure the resistance between these uh, outputs, there was short circuit between all these power supplies. And first what I saw was like, um, what's wrong? What's like, is there something wrong with the PCB? Like where all the power supplies were um, short circuit inside of the PCB. Then I, I was thinking like, uh, probably not because, you know, they do all these electrical checking in the PCB factory. And, uh, then the guy what was checking the board for last two days, he told me that uh, because we were speaking about these uh, areas here and here, he told me that these chips which are here, 
they are a little bit different from the chips what they uh, usually fit on the board. And then I was thinking, hmm, if these chips, if they are wrong, then yes, there could be something wrong with the power supplies. If we have a look on the schematic, this is, the, this is one of the power supplies, this is controller, and the chips, what he was uh, talking about, are these transistors, this one and this one, okay? Uh, so, uh, what we did, uh, I opened the datasheet of the transistor, we took the uh, transistor or the chip what they used to feed on all the other boards which were working just fine, we took the chip what was fitted on the board which uh, were not working and uh, there was a difference. And these two chips, they are exactly the chips what I have here, what you can see here in this uh, microscope view. And we are going to have a look, I'm going to show you what is the difference between the chips. First, what we would like to see is the marking on the top of the chips. I'm going to use my torch and we are going to have a look. 4816B. 4816B. So the marking looks same. Even the logo, the special S, it looks like same. Uh, the, there is a little bit difference between the chips. You can see the package is a little bit different. Also, the writing is a little bit different. The uh, pin one mark is a little bit different. But this is sometimes normal between, you know, even if you have legged uh, chips, sometimes happen that between different batches of the chip, they may do some adjustments in the in the package. It's fine. So when you have a just first look on this chip, it looks like uh, the correct one. What is interesting, when I uh, switch this my torch to UV light, have a look what happened. You can only see the marking on one of the chips, the, the right one, the one which is the correct chip. But I think this is just, uh, you know, it, it is interesting, but I don't think it's, it's a rule how you can recognize fake chips from the real chips. But uh, because I have this UV light, I was uh, just interested to see if there is difference. And see, there is difference between the fake chip and the real chip. But as I said, it doesn't mean you can use UV light to check if your chips are uh, correct or not. I'm going to switch this off. Uh, and uh, because the chips, because these chips, they look exactly the same, what we can do um, to compare them, we can measure it. Especially because uh, these are transistors, what you can see here, this is the data sheet of the chip. So these are just two transistors and uh, it's going to be quite simple to measure it because uh, some of the pins, they are connected all together, like these pins 7, 6, 5, they are all connected together. Pins uh, number 2 and 3, they are connected together. And between some pins, they, there are diodes, like between this D1 and S1, D2, there is a diode and also here are some diodes. So it should not be difficult to measure, the, to measure these uh, transistors and uh, let's have a look if both chips will behave exactly the same. Okay, uh, I had to move my microphone a little bit on side, so the sound of this video may be now a little bit different, probably a little bit quieter, uh, but you know, I need better access to the chips. Also, what I've done, I uh, set my DVM into diode mode because we would like to be able to see this diode, which is here. And also I rotated the chips. Uh, we are going to measure the pins 5, 6, 7, and 8, and uh, I would like to have better access to these pins. Now you can see the pin number 1 is on the right side. Yeah. Question to you. So how we are going to measure this chip? Do you know? First, I'm going to place 
this black probe on pin number 8 and I'm going to place this red probe on pin number 7. What should we see on this DVM? Do you know? Have a look here, okay? So pin number 8, pin number 7, D1, S1, D2, D1, S1, D2. Here is this diode. So what should we see? We should see something around 0 0.5. If I place black probe on pin number, uh, I don't know, let's say 6 and the red one on pin number 5, what should we see? There is short circuit, okay? So we should see on DVM 0. And what if I swap the probes? What if I place the red one on pin number 8 and the black one on pin number 6? What should we see? Nothing. There will be open circuit. So let's do it, okay? The first I'm going to place the black probe. So this is the black probe. I'm going to place it on pin number 8. And I'm going to place the red probe, this is the red probe, I'm going to place it on pin number 7. 0 0.5. So there is the diode. If I place the red probe on pin number 6, what should we see? Same 0 0.5 because there is short circuit between 7 and 6. So 0 0.5, perfect. If I place it on pin number 5, there should be 0 0.5 because there is short circuit between 5, 6 and 7. Perfect. Uh, if I place uh, this black probe on pin number 7 and if I place this red probe on pin number 6, what should we see? Short circuit. So we should see 0 on DVM. Perfect. Okay. If I place the black one on 6, and the red probe on 5, there is short circuit. If I slap the probes, and if I place the, don't forget the picture in the uh, camera is uh, flipped, so it may look a little bit confusing <laughs> that I'm holding the red probe here, and it is actually on this uh, other side, okay? So don't get confused. So I slap the probes, now I'm going to place this red probe on pin number 8 and I'm going to place the oops so this is the red probe okay I'm going to place it on pin number 8 and the black probe I'm going to place it on pin number 7 what should we see nothing open circuit see there is nothing on DVM if I place it on pin number 6 nothing, pin number 5, nothing. If I place the red probe on pin number 7 and when I place the black probe on pin number 6, what should we see? There should be short circuit, so we should see 0 on DVM. See, 0 and here is also 0. If I place this here, the red probe and this is the black one, Oops, zero. So this chip which is here, it behaves exactly as it should. So this is the chip which is the right one. Now let's have a look on the fake chip, what we can measure there. So I'm going to move to this one. I'm going to place this red probe on uh, pin number 8 and the black probe on pin number 7. <gasps> what is this? There is zero. What this means? It looks like there is short circuit between pin number 7 and pin number 8. This is definitely not uh, the chip what we need. Okay, let's have a look when I place this one on pin number 6. This is open circuit, open. If I move the red probe on pin number 7, open, open. 
Okay, when I move it on pin number six, short circuit. Okay, now I'm going to swap the probes. I'm going to place the black one on pin number eight. So this is the black probe. Short circuit. Nothing. 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 Short circuit. Mm. One more time so you can see it better. Okay. So it looks like on this fake chip there is short circuit between pin 8 and 7 and also short circuit between pin 5 and 6, these two pins. And we don't really need to measure this chip, uh, we don't need to continue measuring this chip, we know it's wrong. And if we have a look on our schematic, we can also see what was actually happening during the during the measurement, why the modules were failing. Yeah. So this is the chip and you can see in our schematic on our module, pin number 8 is connected to the input voltage and pin number 7 is connected on all the output voltages. So basically if there is short circuit between pin number 8 and between pin number 7, then there is short circuit between all the voltages uh, which are using these chips. Quite bad. It means the input voltage was connected to processor, to memories, to Ethernet, to all the chips which are on the module. So the 5 volts, what was here on the input, or, or 12 volts, or 24 volts, uh, this voltage was connected directly to all the chips on the board. It means all the chips, they are completely gone, they are damaged. Okay, uh, and that's everything for today's video. I really hope you found it useful. If, uh, if you have some stories about fake chips, and if you like, uh, share them in the comment. I'm really curious to see uh, what kind of experience you have with fake uh, components. Uh, because this one was quite simple one, but I can tell you, in past uh, we had problems like with processors. Yeah? We bought uh, some processors and all the processors, they were fake. And that's quite like, uh, cost a lot of money and it's a lot of work. Uh, so if you have some stories about fake chips, uh, uh, and if you like, share them in the comments. If you like this video, don't forget to press like button. And if you like this channel, then subscribe. It's very, very helpful. All this is very, very helpful. Like, subscribe, comments. So thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.